The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. I am Amara Rashid, and I'm the marketing manager at Persevia. Today, the purpose of this webinar is to discuss the changes that are made in the MIPS fine, in the QPP final rule 2019, and how will they impact you? If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. And towards the end of the presentation, I'll bring them up and our presenter will be happy to answer them for you. Now I'll turn the time over to our presenter today, Dr. Fatma Baloch. She is the quality reporting expert at Persevia and she will help you, she will actually take you through the strategies to navigate through the final role. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out on a Friday afternoon to join the webinar. Um, I'm Fatima Baloch, and I'm the product owner for MIPS at Persevia. Um, and today, um, I'm aiming to go over the final changes made for MIPS 2019 and how it would impact the final score for us. You are, everybody's welcome to ask questions in the question answers box and um, we'll have enough time at the end to take up the questions. So let's start. Um, today, um, in the beginning, I will go over the highlights for the changes made in 2019. and. Sorry about that, yes. So I will go over highlights um, about the changes made um, in MIPS 2019 and then go over some new terms that were introduced by CMS. Um, then we will dive into each individual performance category and see, uh, uh, look at the changes made and the changes not made, the things that have been um, same from last year. Then we will look at the composite performance score for MIPS for 2019 and then the performance threshold, and then we will also have time for question answers at the end. Let's start with the highlights. For 2019, um, CMS has added new clinician types to the MIPS eligible clinicians. So the list from 2018 would remain the same. And in addition, um, we would have MIPS eligible clinicians, uh, which would be physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, audiologists, psychologists, dietitians, and nutritional professionals. Um, also, for 2019, CMS has added a new element to the low volume threshold. Um, so last year, for 2018, there were two determinants. One was 90,000 or less in Part B allowed charges, and then 200 or less Part B enrolled patients. For 2019, they have added a third criterion, which is 200 or less covered professional services. So now addition of this third criterion would mean that a lot more clinicians can be excluded um, from MIPS eligibility. However, at the same time, CMS has also introduced um, the opt-in policy. Now, the, now with the opt-in policy, it would mean that the physicians who are um, not, who are in the low volume, volume threshold determinant can still opt to report for MIPS if they do not um, fall, if they meet or exceed at least one determinant. So for example, if a patient, if there's a physician who may not have more than 90,000 in Part B allowed charges, but he still provides care to more than 200 patients, then that clinician can choose to report on MIPS. Then um, there are major uh, performance category changes um, in each um, category, but as a um, superficial look, cost has new episode-based measures and um, 
the scoring methodology for promoting interoperability has been changed and we will look into them when we go to the section for performance categories. In order to help the clinicians, um, the CMS has retained previously um, introduced bonus points, has also increased some bonus points, and we will go over the bonuses um, as we move through our presentation. And also in the next slide, we will be going over the new terms that have been introduced by CMS, um, and they will replace the previously used terminologies. And as expected, um, in 2019, there have been changes in performance thresholds. And as the years are passing, it's getting more and more challenging to earn the minimum threshold um, as compared to the earlier years. And from here, it is just going to get more and more challenging for physicians to do so. Um, and also for this year, um, the physicians have an option for virtual group reporting election, and the deadline for that would be December 31st for 20, um, of 2018. So for year three, CMS has introduced these um, new terminologies, and these will replace the older ones. Um, and they have done so based on the feedback that they have received, and they want to make the program understandable um, all across the board. Um, so the first term that they have um, introduced is collection type, and the term collection type will be used for a set of quality measures, which has specifications and data completeness criteria, and examples for that would be electronic CQMs, QCDR measures, or MIPS CQMs, which was previously registry measures and will now be called MIPS CQMs. Now, submitter type is basically another term for the MIPS eligible clinicians, MIPS eligible groups, or any third party intermediary who, are, who is going to submit um, their data to CMS. And then Submission type is the mechanism through which the submitter type will submit data to CMS. Now we'll go over each performance category individually and see what has changed and what has not and how it may um, impact for the final impact on the final performance um, score for MIPS. So the biggest change in 2019 for quality performance category is the reduction of the final weight, uh, weight toward final MIP score. So last year it was 50%, and this year it has been reduced to 45%. For 2019, CMS has not changed the minimum performance period for each category. So like last year, it would still remain 12 months for quality performance category. This year, too, it is mandatory for um, MIPS eligible clinicians and groups to report to at least six measures, and out of which at least one must be an outcome measure or a high priority measure. So like I discussed in the previous slide, that the final score has been decreased from 50 to 45. Um, there is a new feature that the CMS had been talking about adding um, in the last year, and that was the ability for MIPS eligible clinicians and groups to report measures via multiple collection types. So that would mean that an eligible clinician or a group can submit the quality measures through MIPS CQMs, through electronic CQMs, QCDR measures, etc. And CMS will select the one with the greatest measure achievement points for the final score. Now only the small practices which have 15 clinicians or less may report via claims. Um, otherwise, uh, this option would not be available for um, practices, uh, larger practices which is greater than 15 clinicians. 
also um, CMS has introduced the concept of extremely topped out measures. So um, that would be in addition to the topped out measures from year two. Now, what, what are extremely topped out measures? Those are basically measures um, that, that their average mean performance would be unvaryingly within 98th to 100th percentile. And contrary to the topped out measures, extremely topped out measures will not follow the four year life cycle and will be removed in the next rulemaking cycle. So extremely topped out measures are those measures whose um, average mean performance is within 98th to 100th percentile. Now this year, CMS has especially focused on the opioid treatments, follow up, and um, and for that, they have added bonus measures in promoting interoperability that we'll be discussing later. And for that, they have also revised the definition of high priority measure. And so now high priority measures include, um, is for 2019 high priority measures is a measure which can be an outcome measure, patient experience measure, or opioid related quality measure. So if you remember from 2018, um, there was a small practice bonus um, given to small practices, which was five points, and it used to be added to the final MIPS score. Um, this was done to um, help the small practices and reduce their burden. Um, and CMS continues to aim for that. And this year, they have increased the bonus from five points to six points. Um, and another change that they have done is that this bonus would now be added to the quality performance category instead of adding it at the end to the final MIPS score. Also, CMS has added eight new quality measures and have removed 26 existing quality measures. Um, like last year, end-to-end -end reporting bonus still exists, which is one point per measure, and improvement bonus still remains, and the bonus for reporting additional outcome and high priority measure, measures also still remain. This is something that has not be, been changed in 2019. Now let's look at promoting interoperability performance category. Um, the, uh, the weightage for this category towards final MIPS score has remained the same at 25%. The minimum performance period also remains the same with 90 day period. However, for 2019, CMS has made it mandatory for the MIPS eligible clinicians and MIPS eligible submitters to use only the 2015th certified EHR technology. Now they have done so so that it can be made easier for patients to access their data and also for the patient info to be shared easily between doctors and other healthcare providers. Also, um, CMS has changed the scoring methodology for promoting interoperability, which we'll discuss in the next couple slides. So as discussed in the previous slide, there is no change in the final score in 2019 for promoting interoperability performance category. Um, the option for re-weighting still remains as last year. The only difference is um, that the clinician types have been added, which are, which are the same eligible, MIPS eligible clinician types that we discussed earlier in the presentation. Now the CMS has made it mandatory to use 2015 certified EHR technology, and that would mean that we'll have a single smaller set of objectives and measures. So um, in 2018, we had two measure, two measure sets, which one was transition objectives and measures, and one was um, just objectives and measures. So for 2019, we would have just one some smaller set of objectives and measures. Now, um, just going to reiterate, um, that CMS has uh, focused on opioid um, measures this year. So for that, they have 
added two new measures to the e-prescription objective, and the measures are to verify opioid treatment agreement and query of prescription drug monitoring program. Now, these two measures are optional, and um, reporting on them would mean five bonus points per measure uh, for these measures in PI category. And they have introduced um, a new scoring methodology for PI, which would mean um, and this this new methodology is performance based scoring at individual measure level, which would mean that CMS has removed the base performance and bonus scores from PI category from last year and they have introduced this new method on which the clinician's performance will be scored on each measure level. And the clinicians, MIPS eligible clinicians, are required to submit the, new, the measures data on numerator, denominator, or yes and no, uh, depending on which kind of a measure it is. One thing to um, note here is that uh, inability to report on a measure or reporting no on a yes no measure would mean zero promoting interoperability score so that would mean that even though um, security risk analysis is mandatory um, and but we will not be scored on this measure um, mips eligible submitters also have the option to um, submit claims for exclusions, and and if done so, the points would be reallocated to other measures in the category. Improvement activities performance category will still be through attestation in year 2019, and its way toward final MIP score would be the same as last year at 15%. Um, however, a new change here is that the PI bonus, which used to be added at the end um, in improvement activities performance category, would be discontinued this year. CMS has added six new activities. They have modified five previous um, older activities, and they have removed one activity, which is participation in population health research. Cost performance category has increased its weightage towards final MIP score from 10% to 15%. And this has been on the expense of taking this additional 5% from quality category. So quality is now at 45% and cost is at 15%. Um, the minimum performance period would still remain the same at 12 months. And like previous years, cost performance category would still be calculated through the administrative claims data by CMS. Um, a new change to this performance category is addition of eight new episode-based measures on top of the two older measures of total per capita cost and Medicare spending per beneficiary measure. Let's take a look at the eight new measures that they have added. So these are the eight new measures added in cost performance category, but I just want to repeat myself that the clinicians would not have to do any additional reporting to get scored on this performance category. And like 2018, in this year too, this performance category will be scored through the administrative claims data by CMS. So at the end, this is how the MIPS composite performance score would look like for 2019 with 45% for quality, 25% for promoting interoperability, 15% for CPIA, and 15% for cost.
These weights, however, can be reweighted to 0% if a MIPS eligible clinician joins an existing practice in the last three months and the practice is not reporting to MIPS as a group, or if the MIPS eligible clinician joins a newly formed practice in the final three months of the reporting period. So basically, in these two scenarios, the clinician would be MIPS exempted. As expected, there has been a major change in performance threshold, and it will continue to do so every year. So from 2018 to 2019, minimum performance threshold has increased from 15 to 30 points, and the additional performance threshold has increased from 70 to 75 points. So this means that if MIPS eligible submitter is earning less than 30 points on MIPS composite performance score, um, they would get a penalty. And the penalty has been increased this year from minor, negative 5 to negative 7%. And if a clinician was to, to earn between 30 and 34%, they would avoid any penalty. And earning 75 to 100% points on MIPS composite performance score would earn the clinicians a 7% incentive with the possibility of exceptional performance bonus on top of that. At this point, I would like the question answer session to open and I would be glad to answer any questions that you guys have. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Fatima. We'll go ahead, uh, as you just said, we'll go ahead and take some time for questions now. Uh, just a reminder for everyone, you guys still have time to post your questions into the question answer box in your control panel. And let's have a look at the questions. All right. So the first question asks if what should we do if our EHR becomes decertified? Can't we report on PI anymore? So um, if your EHR becomes decertified from 2015 later on in the year, CMS gives the submitters an option to apply for reweighting for PI category. And this way, the PI scores would be reweighted to get um, quality, and um, you can still go ahead with uh, MIPS reporting. OK, great. Thank you. So Peter and Deborah wants to know if the slides would be available after the presentation. Yes, right after um, the webinar ends, uh, we'll email you the web, uh, uh, this slide deck, so make sure you Keep an eye out in your email inbox. You will get an email from someone from Perseveria. OK, now let's just move on to the next question. So it's, if, if a small practice can't meet data completeness criteria for quality measures, how would it impact us in 2019? So for um, small practices uh, not meeting data completeness criteria, So for small practices not meeting data completeness criteria, CMS has given the benefit of th uh, giving them a flat three points for the quality measures. It would be similar to the way it was done in 2018, and no change has been made on it for 2019. I hope this answers the question. All right, thank you. Um, okay. uh, the next question is, what can we report in the, minim in the minimum to be able to avoid penalty? So in, if, uh, even though the main goal for reporting on MIPS is to perform as better as you can and maximum as you can, however, if you want to report minimum, uh, j just reporting quality and reporting it 100% would get you 45 points on the MIPS CPS. However, I would suggest not reporting on one category only and try to 
um, attest to improvement activities as well, just to be on the safe side um, and not to fall into the the red zone where you where you can be penalized. Thank you. All right, and the last question asks, what are the measures that have been removed from quality category? So the measures, the 26 measures that have been removed from the quality category are available in the final rule appendix one, and I will make sure to send out, send them out in the email um, when we send out the slides. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's that's it for today. It looks like a wrap up now. Is there anything else that you would like to um, add before we finish it off? Um, I just want to say that MIPS is amping up and it is going to get more and more difficult as years pass by. Like this year, they have restructured PI and made it so much more difficult to earn points on. Um, and also, we might be looking at more difficult benchmarks per measure to achieve in quality. Um, also, the financial financial impact of MIPS is increasing, and it just depends on and is completely dependent on how the clinicians perform over the year. And also, thank you all for joining um, and listening into the webinar today. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Fatma, and thank you everyone. We appreciate you appreciate you being here, and all of us. You will get the um, webinar slides and recording in the next 24 hours. Thank you for joining us today again, and hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye.